the chancellor said on more than one occasion that you know better people are the key mm -hmm. to improving the system. Mm -hmm. Is that your view? Without question. I don't think Chancellor Rhee and I could be more aligned on one issue than this, more aligned on any other issue than this, because people will make the change, not, not processes, not products, not, not programs. It really will be people. Is the, so better people, do you need a better system? Is the system flawed in any way? Or is it, if you can just fix it by bringing in better people? Well, I think you have the best chance of fixing it by bringing in better people, but I think simultaneously that it, there does need to be some systemic change and some things happening at the system level. One of the things, you know, programmatically and systemically we're working on as a district is that alignment of our assessment to our curriculum, to our benchmarks, and making sure that everything is, is, is you know, all of our ducks are in a row. So that does have to happen. But at the end of the day, it's the person standing in front of those children that have the greatest impact. Without, at the end of the day, that's really where the rubber meets the road. And so it is going to be people that make the big change here because it's, it's, the, it's the people who touch kids' lives. Some people have said you guys are just simply putting too much faith in test scores. Well, I wouldn't say too much faith in test scores, but, you know, we have to be able to assess student progress. We have to be able to assess it somehow. We need a universal measure. And so having everybody take the same test is a universal measure. And it's standard-based grading now. I mean, we're all, we're holding all of our students to the same standard. We're not just measuring a year's growth like we used to. When I started teaching, I taught for eight weeks and then wrote my test based on the things that I had covered. We do it differently now. We start by writing the test and then we teach and we assess them, you know, based on the test that we, that we wrote at the very beginning. We're telling and, and identifying right away what it is that students should know and be able to do. And so if we, if we follow that model, then yes, test scores are going to be it. I mean, that's, that's gonna be our measurement of whether or not they mastered the material. Teaching is no longer an art, teaching is a science. Oh, it's without question an art. Teaching is different, teaching, the, the the act of teaching is, is an art. It's almost a performance. It's almost like a dance or a ballet, if you will. And you see teachers in the classroom who are incredibly skillful at it, of managing transitions, of provisioning materials, of using different explanatory devices, of, I call it, paving different pathways to knowledge. Um, again, I grew up in a system that all of my teachers seemed to think the only path to knowledge was through a textbook. And then the overhead projector. Everything came either through a textbook or the overhead projector. And so technology has helped us a great deal with that. But there's just tricks of the trade. There's this charisma that certain teachers have that is a beautiful thing to watch. There is the science of curriculum and the science of assessment and the science of, of you know, backward design and backward mapping and all those things that I just mentioned. But when you take that and you apply it and you bring it to life in a classroom, that is art. Now, you go watch teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do your teachers ever get to watch teachers teach? We do what's called learning walks. And so we have a rubric, a, a sheet of paper that has a few things identified to look for when you go into a classroom. So I mentioned we're organized by professional development cohorts. So our professional development cohorts will go on little field trips to other colleagues' classrooms. And they'll be looking for evidence of um, objectives posted, differentiation, scaffolding, and so they will go in and look. Wait a minute, so if I'm one of your teachers, mm -hmm. someday the door might open and five or six of my colleagues might come in and watch me Correct. teach? Correct. How do they feel about this? Um, I haven't asked them, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I imagine I'll, I'll ask them, we're gonna do a survey at the semester break about this. Um, it's something we planned together in professional development cohorts. It's not like it's a sneak attack. So they planned the rubric, they discussed it, and so everybody's visiting everybody else. So, so. anybody who teaches here knows that the door might as well be open? Absolutely. It is teaching, well teaching is a reflective practice, but it's also a very public practice. I mean, we're going to be watching your teaching. I mean, we have to watch to figure out what's going on. Data is gonna give us some information. And then we have to work backward from that data to say, you know, why did we get these results? Why did we get them, and they're terrific, because we need to bottle that. Why did we get them and they're bad? What are we going to do about it? You know, and in order to do that in our profession, it's through observation. And so as the instructional leader of this school, if I don't know what's going on in every classroom, shame on me. I need to know what's happening. I, 
can't know every detail of every class, but I need to have a sense of what's occurring in all of my classrooms. Is there any downside to all this transparency? Well, it, it, there's ha there has to be a downside, and I think it's draining. I think it's it does it's very draining on people to feel like you're constantly being scrutinized and someone's constantly like you don't feel like you can have a bad day. You know what I mean? And and we're all entitled to those kind of days. But I'll say what I said earlier. My compass points to what's in the best interest of students, and I only get 180 days to get them to master these standards. And every one of those days count. Every one of those minutes in those days count. And how are you held accountable? I'm accountable for all of the achievement. <laughs> I'm accountable for student discipline. I'm accountable for this community loving the school and wanting to send their students here. I am accountable for um, the safety and security of everybody here. So my accountability is the big umbrella. Our weekly attendance looks good, but our overall is still poor. Because so far, any times when you said, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Uh, I don't sleep very much anymore. Um, and so every night I think to myself, what have I gotten myself into? But I, not in a bad way. I think to myself, I'm lucky to have gotten myself into this because although I, I lose sleep, although I worry quite a bit, I really feel that I'm doing the right thing. No and regrets. I, not a single regret. I really feel that this is important work. It's work that needs to be done. I am a fan of the Chancellor's mission and I feel supported by her office and by my instructional superintendent. And I, every day I go home exhausted and I do lose a little bit of sleep, but I really feel that I'm you know, making a change in the world. Thank you.